Call politician panel. Uh, we are now joined by uh, Liberal MP Jason Felinski, who is chair of the Standing Committee on Tax and Revenue. We're also joined by Labour Senator Katie Gallagher, who is chair of the Select Committee on COVID-19. Uh, welcome to you both. Katie, if I could start with you, and um, you know, we just heard Greg there outlining the economic challenges uh, that this country faces. But Katie, I want to get your reaction from what Tim Hicks was talking about a little earlier, about the sort of support that is not being given to aged care homes and to the residents there. What's happening here? There seems to be a breakdown somewhere. Yes, look, I think with these are some of the issues we've explored in the COVID Select Committee and um, aged care, community care, um, disability providers are all saying, you know, they've got concerns around their staff, they've got concerns around their clients and they've certainly got uh, concerns around access to PPE and other protective equipment. So, you know, the situation unfolding fast in Victoria, but you know, we've had several months to prepare and I think everything that needs to be done should be being done to make sure that people in aged care are protected but also that staff uh, are able to continue to do their job. And I think the other thing highlighted by the aged care issues are just the fragility of insecure work, um, the number of aged care staff who are temporary contracts, um, you know, working, ha you know, week to week. And, um, you know, that's presented some real challenges, I think, in keeping workers safe and the people they care for. Shall we switch to the economy? And I'm going to ask you, Jason Felinski, there was a time when the uh, phrase fiscal conservative was pretty trendy, pretty popular in the Liberal Party. Now you're looking at these quote unquote eye watering numbers that have been handed down by Josh Frydenberg this week. Do they sit comfortably with you? Do you want to see some of the stimulus pulled back as quickly as possible? Uh, Greg, thank you very much. I, I think the term fiscal conservative was one that um, Kevin Rudd acquired for himself, but uh, so it was popular across the, the, uh, the aisle. True. Um, but I think, uh, to your point, this isn't really about uh, money. This isn't really about the numbers. This is about people's lives. Um, Katie's done an excellent job as the chair of the COVID-19 uh, in, or committee that has, um, you know, kept abreast of this unfolding situation in the Senate. Um, and as, as she can tell you, as I think you guys know yourselves from observation, that we need to make rapid adjustments in our um, response to this crisis, especially when we were forced to close about two thirds to three quarters of the economy down to keep people um, health uh, safe. And um, as things transpire, we will need to ensure that we are helping and supporting people where we can. At um, any I cost? Think, at any cost, Jason? Well, I think it... Well, look, uh, Greg, I mean, the truth of the matter is, no, uh, people won't keep giving us money forever and a day, so we need to be judicious in the way that we allocate those funds. However, having said that, what I think the core of your question or underlying your question is whether we can spend our way out of this economic crisis or grow our way out of this economic crisis. We're not at that point yet, but there will come a time when we need to switch the, um, flick the switch rather to a growth platform where we can improve people's economic opportunities so that they have financial security in the years ahead. Uh, you know, Katie, the government says that uh, they want to wean people off uh, job seeker. Um, uh, but the question is, where are the jobs? You know, you can wean people off job seeking. You can get them to say, listen, we'll only be giving you this supplement only if you start looking for jobs. But where are the jobs? Yes, look, and Fauzi, I think that was one of the missed opportunities of this week's uh, budget update. I mean, we had one, one year of forecasts and no plan about what to do about it. I think most Australians understand that the economy is really struggling, that the budget is under enormous pressure with massive debt and deficit. But what is the government going to do about it? And in a sense, what we saw was no plan at all this week, um, an admission that a number, another 240,000 Australians are going to lose their jobs by December. We've got 1.6 million people currently on job uh, seeker. That's doubled since March. So we're in such dire circumstances. I think what we're all waiting for is what is the plan for recovery? What is the plan for job creation? And with all the spending you're doing, make sure it's high quality spending that's either creating jobs, protecting jobs, 
getting people into training or supporting families to put food on the table um, because you know we really are in such difficult economic t circumstances. So just to flesh that out a little, Katie, I've heard you and Anthony Albanese and others making this point, it's about the job creation. What exactly is it that you're proposing here? Is it some nation building infrastructure? I mean, what, what does this job scheme look like that you're broad brushing here? Well, I mean, we're encouraging the government to come forward with a jobs plan, but we think there are areas um, they should be looking at in terms of growing the economy. I mean, obviously, if they're able to grow the economy, then, um, you know, that part of that will be growing jobs. But things like, uh, yeah, infrastructure, other things like perhaps settling an energy uh, policy. If you talk to the private sector, that's the single uh, thing that comes up in every boardroom across Australia is put in place an energy policy to give us investment certainty that allow us to grow our business. But I think it's also looking at the what the workforce needs to be in a, a pandemic and post-pandemic world. We've seen enormous pressure on people with insecure jobs, so looking at how we can grow good, secure jobs that um, you know don't result in people working when they feel sick because they don't know how to put uh, how otherwise they'll put food on the table. But this is the big question uh, that needs an answer. And I guess what we were told this week is, well, you can wait till October to see what we're thinking about. And we just think every day that passes, more jobs will be lost. And, you know, that, that has an individual and community impact. Uh, Jason, I mean, this is the story here, isn't it? Like, I mean, you know, the Liberal Party keeps saying jobs, 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 and that's what the coalition keeps spooking all the time. We are the party for jobs. But not much details in terms of job creation here. Are we about to see more of a business stimulus perhaps going forward? I and mean, we know that Matthias Cormann has said that the jobs will be created by private sector, by business itself. But if business doesn't want to spend because we're in a recession and because we might be going back into lockdown again, don't we then have to look at the government to spend big infrastructure? Uh, Fazi, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and Katie's also right in what she says, which is the point is not to just spend on things just because you want to spend money. Uh, you want to be able to be investing in things that make sense. And what we do know is that since the Fair Work Act came into operation in 2010, um, the sort of uh, increase in uh, what Labor calls insecure work or what other people call flexible work has actually accelerated an increase. So there's probably things that we should look at in terms of industrial relations to providing people with longer term secure work in education and training and the prime minister's already made um, has made announcements around uh, job trainer to align people's education and training to the jobs of the future we know that the greatest impact which no one seems to be talking about these days on jobs in the next decade will be the um, will be the deployment of artificial intelligence in our economy so that's going to have a major impact as well and look we have and we know this and people know this too According to the World Economic um, Forum, we have the world's second worst industrial relations system. We have one of the world's worst tax systems. It's inefficient, it's unfair, and it doesn't promote um, and reward opportunity and risk. Mm. And we need to get back when this crisis is over. I mean, it is always tempting in a crisis to say, let's do something, um, this is something, well, let's do this. But we need to keep our wits about us we need to get through this and then we will have a plan to actually grow the economy and provide financial security and economic hope and opportunity for Fair people. Fair enough. Side. Just quickly and finally to both of you, uh, we can be creative. I guess we can afford to be creative in addressing some of the problems that manifest during this crisis. One we discovered this week from Josh Frydenberg is the country's population growth has crashed to levels not seen since 1916. Borders are shut. So what are we going to do about those babies? Katie? <laughs> Look, I'm not sure it's really a short-term solution to some of the present challenges we've got. Um, you know, the challenges that we face now are real. It's jobs. It's jobs up. You know, we're losing jobs. We know that we're going to have quarter of a million in the, lost in the lead up to uh, December. Those things can't be solved uh, by a pop, you know by people having babies. Um, or enough. having them in the next year. So I think the focus really from the Treasurer needs to be right here, right now, what are you going to do about jobs, how are you going to create as many as you can and protect the ones that uh, people have right now. All right, last word, Jason. 
Well, I, Greg, I have to say I was very surprised to hear this statistic from the Treasurer because I thought the Netflix and chill effect during the lockdown would have uh, had a had an impact. Oh, but, um, Apparently not. Just didn't Apparently happen. not. Just didn't you can happen. speak for yourself, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, <laughs> well, well, we'll watch that uh, index. We'll have to sort of find a correlation between the Netflix data and the, the uh, population rate in the future. Jason Felinski, member for McKellar Liberal Backbencher, and Katie Gallagher, 